Well, you got your book handy, Paul? I do, yes. Cool. All right, we're on page 23, top of the page, first paragraph, first complete paragraph, starting with these observations. This is page 23. All That's right. right. All right. These observations would be academic and pointless if our friend never took the first drink, thereby setting the terrible cycle in motion. Therefore, the main problem of the alcoholic centers in, the, in his mind rather than in his body. If you ask him why he started on that last bender, the chances are he will offer you any one of a hundred alibis. Sometimes these excuses have a certain plausibility, but none of them really make sense in the light of the havoc an alcoholic's drinking bout creates. They sound like the philosophy of a man who, having a headache, beats himself on the head with a hammer so that he can't feel the ache. If you draw this fallacious reasoning to the attention of an alcoholic, he will laugh it off or become irritated and refuse to talk. Once in a while, he may tell the truth, and the truth, strange to say, is usually that he has no more idea why he took that first drink than you have. Some drinkers have excuses with which they are satisfied part of the time, but in their hearts, they really do not know why they do it. Once this malady has a real hold, they're a baffled lot. There is this the obsession that somehow, someday, they will beat the game, but they often suspect they are down for the count. How true this is, few realize. In a vague way, their families and friends sense that these drinkers are abnormal, but everybody hopefully awaits the day when the sufferer will rouse himself from his lethargy and assert his power of will. The tragic truth is that the man be, that if the man be a real alcoholic, the happy day may not arrive. He has lost control. At a certain point in the drinking of every alcoholic, he passes into a state where the most powerful desire to stop drinking is of absolutely no avail. This tragic situation has already arrived in practically every case long before it is suspected. The fact is that most alcoholics, for reasons yet obscure, have lost the power of choice to drink, in drink. Our so-called willpower becomes practically non-existent. We are unable at certain times to bring into our consciousness with sufficient force the memory of the suffering and humiliation of ev even a week or a month ago. We are without defense against the first drink. It's a long reading, but uh, is that enough to chew on? Yes, yeah, thank you. And welcome, everyone. And if you're new to the platform here, how we look at everything really stems from how we look at a statement on page 64 when they're describing and leading us into doing the first working step or action step, which is the inventory. And in the book, it says, being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. If we are convinced of that, we are now going to look at its common manifestations. And then the next paragraph is resentment. Now, you can look at your own uh, activity. And usually when there's a resentment, it's called yours. Yes. So it's my resentment, my fears. And when you're sharing it, it may, gives it a distinction between someone else's fear. This is my fear my resentment as if it's different than their fear and their reason my fear my resentment my harm's done to others to me that habitual reasserting the identity identification with this thing that has defeated us with self is really the root of the problem so we keep we seem to keep identifying and we don't the head will keep identifying as self fucking no matter what and we just seemingly go along with that yeah almost as if we're powerless or we're in a state of without knowing 
So we don't know what's going on. And therefore, like it said in one of these paragraphs, we have to come up with a story to try to make sense of shit that we don't have any understanding of because we don't know what's going on. So we come to usually after the shit hits the fan. You know, We're not awake before the shit hits the fan, but we actually are awake, but it's not being accessed. Yes, because our attention and interest has been wedded to this idea of the head where the problem resides. So there's an obsession with this idea of self and that obsession with this idea of self puts us in a state of not knowing in a lot of a lot of levels. Like he said in here, the real alcoholic is probably the last person to find out they're a real alcoholic. Yeah. That's an ins- that's not just a random phenomenon. That's because of the, the problem, the problem of the act of being identified as the problem. The ones who seemingly is being influenced by that act is the last one to know it. Yeah. That's just amazing. And it goes on and on and on and on. So our simple point that we tend to center everything on, because I felt in the community of AA that I'm in, it wasn't emphasized at all, is this idea, and because it was passed on to me, the inventory process was passed on to me that I'm going to look at my resentments, my fears, and my harms done to others. And that goes completely against the statement on, in the big book on page 64. They describe very clearly that these resentments are manifestations of self in our life. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is how, without us knowing it, is something foreign to us using us to manifest itself in through. Yeah, that's an amazing fucking mystery, isn't it? How could something that's so hostile have a home in us? Yeah, where every time we meet it, do going about its business, we 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 greet it with me. Yeah, we believe it's me that's talking to us. That's why it seems to be so convincing. Why would me mislead me? It doesn't make any sense to that mental logic. But in fact, it, it, that's what's happening. We're being misled by, quote unquote, me. Yeah. Now, I think the me that's being presented in the head is foreign to us. I do. And I believe the exact nature of the wrong is that it is foreign to us which afforded me the possibility of this idea that I could be free from it. And I was handcuffed by the not knowing what was going on. And I was constantly trying to be free as it. Yeah. So I was trying to get out of self as self without knowing it. Yeah. I thought I was trying to get out of something as me. Yeah. But that me was the thing I wanted to get out of. Who would have thought? Yeah. So I constantly try to get out of this me that I'm not, which made me the me that I'm not. This is the weird thing. And it's for all intents and purposes. Like all froze up there. Pardon y'all. Technical difficulties. Tell a joke, Jacob. Yeah, take over, Jacob. Oh, man. What kind of joke do y'all want? Let's see. Yeah, I don't I don't know any jokes. I'm not good coming up with stuff right on the cuff. Kathleen, your turn. Jacob, tell the one about... And ironic. Tell the one about how we know that uh, Columbus was an alcoholic. How do we know? Because when he set sail, he didn't know where he was going. Uh-huh. When he returned, he didn't know where he had been. And uh-huh. the whole thing was financed by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, I, think, all right. I, I bet there, yeah, I, I bet there's loads of historical figures we can we can uh pin the pin the alcoholic hat on. Yes, sir. Hey. So the connection down again. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. 
All right. So I was saying, yes, I knew this happened. I remembered what I was saying. Yes. So I'm an advocate of the four column inventory papers you can get from the internet by going to Joe and Charlie. I think they're still presented there. And the funny thing is when one of the older versions of their format, they would have self above the whole thing. Yeah, they'd have self above the four columns. Yeah, because the four columns would be, you could see how self had defeated you. Yeah, you may not see self, but you would see how it has defeated you. And hopefully then the finger would point to the, the true defeater, which is, which is not you, but it is self. Yeah. So to me, uh, it was like slow time, really. I saw self that one night as foreign to me. And as soon as I saw that, the possibility of being free changed from trying to be free as it, and I, was, I had the ability to be free from it because its nature is not of my nature, yeah? It's foreign, it's foreign to me, sort of like a flu or something, or a disease as they talk about in the, when they were first introducing this to people in the 30s, yeah? This is a disease you're suffering from. To try to limit the blown up effect of thinking it's so fucking personal and that you're the doer of all this behavior. And it's so easy to recognize that you're not the do of all this behavior because how many people who have been taken over by this disease behave the same way, yeah? So you see one set of behaviors in millions of people, you got to realize they're not millions of people's behaviors. If millions of people behave the same way, they've been taken over by the same thing, yeah? Which is not of the millions of people. It's in the millions of people or on top of the millions of people, but it's not of the millions of people. Yeah. And by recognizing it's not of the millions of people, the possibility of being free from it became available. And so it's been since that happened, you know, that really uh, really put a large more, a, a whole lot more tarmac on that slide. Yeah. I just really slid out of out of that bondage and felt a lot of lot of relief and it stabilized. So the description of page 84, the problem will not exist for us. I really believe if you like that to become a habit to see the problem doesn't exist as us. I think that's what will allow a stabilization of that condition. I do. Yeah. So there you go. And then back to this reading. So where is it? These observations would be at what observations? The observations they just talked about, they were trying to describe the disease or its behaviors or its process or how it works. And it would say, basically, if you didn't drink, it would be academic. Yeah. It would be <laughs> and pointless. If, you know, you wouldn't need that knowledge in a way, right? And uh, pointless if our friend never took the first drink. And this is what AA promises, at least how I, it was presented to me when I came in. It was, it's not a, it doesn't promise to uh, restore you to sanity about every topic. It just promised us to be restored to sanity concerning the insanity that precedes the first drink, which they described quite well. Yeah. So that was the target and it's worked. If it worked for a day, that's worked. It worked, yeah. If it worked for 40 years, that worked. But the fact is it works, yeah. A person who hasn't, has not stopped drinking, stops for one day, the process worked, yeah. Now, if it can stabilize, this is the practice of the program, a way of life. And many of us who have crossed the line need a way of life. We're not just going to get dry for a couple of days and come to our senses. We need a complete uh, recovery from the effects of this occupation that we've lived under, yeah? And this is what the program gives us. It gives us a design for living, yeah? A way to live, gives us a North Star, the principle of reliance on something greater than self, yeah? And then basically, 
instead of constantly trying to acquire self-knowledge about this shit, which will avail you nothing, you start having knowledge of self and you recognize that which has defeated you is not you. Yeah. And then these umbilical cords that keep us attached to the mother called the past. Yeah. Because I did all that shit while under the influence is, is snapped. It's broken. Yeah. Because I'm not dwelling on something I didn't actually do 40 years ago. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not dwelling it. Now, if I thought I did it, I'd probably go back to it every once in a while. Yeah. Because of the sense of ownership. But that ownership was broken by the recognition that what I did to people out there, I would have done to anyone unless they could physically stop me. Yeah. There was nothing, there was no choosing targets or shit like that. If you got in my lane, I was probably going to run into you. Yeah, it was just that simple. Yeah, so it, it wasn't like I hate Fords or Mercury's. It was it just you were blocking the self-will that was running wild. And basically, it was my way or the highway. Yeah, so this sense of freedom from... The constant owning. See, even in the judicial system of America, they have, uh, you know, it runs out. You can't be convicted of something after five or 10 or 12 years. Yes. Even though you supposedly did it, it's that you're not going to get punished anymore. Yes. What is it? Limitations. Called? Statute of limitations. Statute of limitations. Where is there a statute of limitations in the head? <laughs> I don't know if I lost it. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, yeah, good. We can hear. I lost all of you guys. But where's the statute of limitation in the head? It's going back to 40 years ago, as if it was yesterday. Yeah? I don't know, Gallery Blue. Yeah? I wouldn't go back to, I wouldn't go, if you did something and it had nothing to do with me, I wouldn't go back 40 minutes to think of you. <laughs> but 40 years because I supposedly did that shit. When, when are you going to get that tattoo washed off? It's just too much. Yeah. And then tell me, talk to me about the phenomena of how many people have the ability quite easily when they stop using and drinking to recognize something is doing for them what they couldn't do for themselves. We're meetings are full of gratitude. Everyone gratitude. God has done for me. God keeps me sober. What about the lower God that you were being driven by in the past? Yeah. When does it become the accountable one? When, when do you put down the burden of ownership of something that it drove you to do 35 years ago? When? Yeah. When do you reach, reach the statute of limitations? How about now? Yeah. By seeing what has defeated you isn't you, wasn't you, and won't be you. It will appear to you as if it's you. It will talk to you as if it's you. It will remember itself as if it's you. It will forecast about itself as if it's you, but it's not. Yeah? And if you see it as not you, you're going to lose interest in it. It's not going to, you're not going to be... It's not like pulling a fucking Band-Aid off an old wound. It's going to come off quite easily because our direction is usually based on it's me or about me. Yeah. And when you make that me not about you, you're going to lose interest in it. Yeah. And that interest now is going to enrich your day instead of being used by the head to enslave your day. It's that simple. I mean, it's your power that's either tying you up or liberating you. It's the same power, yeah? It's not under the jurisdiction of the parasite. It's under our jurisdiction. Yes? That's why when it describes the, perhaps there is a better way, the better way has two poles, finite self, infinite, yeah? Seemingly completely different. But in both cases, there's trust. We are the trust. Yeah. And when there's trust in finite self, 
that fuels the bondage. The same thing, trust in the infinite, that fuels relief. Yeah, we are the common denominator in the equation. Trust, faith, yeah. Faith in, fight faith in finite self or faith in a higher power. After a little while, it's quite easy to discriminate. It is. It's not. I can't understand. You will. You will recognize the tone and the width and the frequency of that which is playing you now. Yeah, something that's coming through you will be will be completely different than when that other fucking thing comes through you and you're anxious. Your breath gets shorter. You don't want to divulge any of your secret plans to anyone because you know they're insane. Yes. And you're just building, waiting for that day to do what your head is telling you. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. Yeah. I had a guy once come and see me. He was a young guy and we had an interesting combination. He was born the day I got sober. So I met him when he was 20. I was 21 years sober. He was 21 years. He was trying his best, but it was difficult. And then one day he came to my house and I could tell he had a little pearl inside of him about getting loaded. And he had been polishing that pearl and he was just waiting for me to shut up so he could split. And I told him fucking split. And that's what he did. Yeah. And then months later, and now he's still in and out and I'm 36 years old. So for 15 years, He's been washed in, washed out, washed in, washed out, washed in, washed out. Yeah. Yeah. Better him than I. But I, what are you going to do? You're like a parent that knows their love isn't going to change the course of their kid's life. It's not going to happen. Yeah. This thing is powerful. So faith or trust is what we are, literally. What we appear to be is like a body and everything, but what we are is really faith or trust. And if you ever heard of Jesus or, you know, read the New Testaments in the gospel, whatever it was, you know, he would do these healings they would try to emphasize. And he was always saying to everyone, it's done according to your belief. But I'm telling you, he could have said that at any moment, walking around uh, fucking Galilee. You know, the guy lost a fish on the line, according to your faith. Caught a fish, according to your faith. Yes? It wasn't just healing. It was every situation. As you believe, so it is. Yeah? So if you believe, and it's not you believing it, the head believes it can manage itself out of its own unmanageability, you're probably going to fucking follow it. Yeah? Because there's no guardrails. There's no separation. It walks into your most intimate memories. And when you meet it, and it, you say, oh, it's me. It's not you. Yeah. It talks to you as you, and it's not you. So just use these things and just go to meetings, and you'll hear there's a lot of yous in the room. They're having the same thoughts, the same feelings same reactions as you have. Now, how, after all the evidence of everyone having your thoughts, they must not be your thoughts. Yes, I mean, serious. We have a shared defeat. You're not the only one who's been defeated by this. The defeat is shared. Many have been defeated, and there's actually one activity that has defeated the many. Yeah. So, and that activity is finite. We know where it resides, which is the mental activity. You can see it and hopefully you can greet it as not you. And when it starts planning itself and starts presenting its little story, rush to step six and seven and, and state the fact that you're entirely ready for, to have this little thing reconfigured. Yeah. And ask that God, ask that higher power to do it. It's just like, for me, it's like putting out the garbage. We did it last night. I did not stay up all night waiting to see the garbage man. I had faith that the garbage is going to be moved, and it has been. Yes? This thing delivers the goods. Recovery delivers the goods. 
Yes. You have to deny a lot of miracles to fucking to believe that, oh, this isn't working for me. You do. There's a lot of denial in that. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know what else was in here. Hold on. Uh, once in a while, he may tell the truth. Yeah. Why did you think he has no more idea why he took the first drink than you have? Because he didn't actually take the first drink. Something used him to take the first drink. And once he takes the first drink, that genie now is out of the bottle and it has more than three wishes for you. <laughs> it has a lot of wishes for you that you're going to sorely regret. <laughs> really? Yeah. So it, it leads us to, to take the drink. But really, it's taken us to take the drink. Yeah. That's why we can't figure anything out because we're not the doer of this mess. We're the transportation for the mess to be done. Yeah. We are the living transformation, transformation, uh, transportation for the, the, the grief to be produced. Yeah. Yeah. We're like that factory they talk about. Yeah. The fact, you know, we manufacture our own misery. I do not believe that. I believe who's ever running the factory is going to manufacture what its idea is. And to me, when self ran the factory, misery was one of its main products. Yes. And really grievance and fucking blame of others. Now that that factory has been turned over to a new employer, it produces, you know, uh, empathy and compassion and, a wholesome wanting to see people travel the lighter. Yeah. You may not be able to change the, the shape of your leg after an operation, but the, the way you think about things can be changed drastically. It can be. Yeah. The way you respond to life can change drastically. You may not be able to change how, what life is going to bring into your life, but, the reaction or the response to it can change dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. It goes on and on, eh? So, the tragic truth, the tragic truth is that if the man be a real alcoholic, that that the that idea that he's going to get better is futile yeah the happy day may not arrive the happy day of them finally turning it around that's probably not going to arrive he has but what is this he has uh, lost control i don't believe he ever had control literally yeah he lost control at a certain point in the drinking of every alcoholic. He passes into a state where the most powerful desire to stop drinking is of absolutely no avail. Just like Amelia, my girlfriend, she's not, she's never been involved in active addiction or response to that. She is a mother of four and she believed the mother instinct is super strong and nothing would override the mother instinct. And I said, I beg to differ, hon. I said, come to an AA meeting with me, a few of them, and you'll realize women have given up their kids for another hit of crack. Yeah. So this thing that takes us over doesn't brook any rebellion. Yeah. It puts the rebellion down fast. <laughs> it fucking does. And unless we are joined with the we, we're outmatched. If you've crossed this line. So I may have a very difficult time to, to get or actually stay sober, but we, we can do it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm happy to be uh, relieved from the bondage of self today. Yeah, that problem is not on the menu of problems that I have to deal with today. Thank God. Because <laughs> if that was the problem, I wouldn't be dealing with any fucking thing else. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a very jealous problem. It overrides any other problem. This is the problem. So the problem has been removed. <laughs> wow, with no thought or effort on my part. Wow. Yeah, it does not exist for us. Man, that's an incredible state, eh? Amen. To be living in. I don't mean visiting. Visiting would be incredible, but living there is really unbelievable. Yeah, it's like living in a national park <laughs> instead of visiting it. Yeah, <laughs> you live in the park. <laughs> yeah. All right, so anyone? Yeah, thanks, Paul. I, I don't see any hands right now, but uh, something that popped out in this section of the book, it's one of the places where it says that the problem centers, the problem is centered yes. in the mind, not in the body. Yes. Yeah. These were great. They were they were laying out and imagine it's just an incredible uh how much uh information about our defeat was given to us through this book. Yeah. And I felt I feel like it was all laced with grace. There was a lot of living in it, a lot of oomph in it. And if you identify with it, that oomph will show up in your life, I feel. Yeah. Really yeah. is. I feel yeah. there's a lot of grace in uh and I felt this is a really a download in a lot of a lot of uh because they go right back to blaming themselves completely and then they describe that you made decisions based on self that puts you in a position to be hurt. Yeah. yeah. And uh what's not to say that every decision has been based on self. Right. Yeah, and it's not our, we, we're not making that choice. And it's said there in that same reading, you know, we didn't make those choices. It's it's not our decision. And yet self is making that decision. Yes, it's something took over the, the controls and has you believing you're the captain. Right. <laughs> I didn't set off on that Friday night to end up in jail, but there I am. <laughs> yeah. I said set off to have some fun. <laughs> and then I'd be so fucking surprised I'd do it the same thing the next night and go up to yeah. end up in jail again. And That's right. Found it. Well, how did I end up in jail again? Yeah. Yeah. Was, I mean, this reading was, ends with that, doesn't it? I mean, it says yeah. that no matter the suffering from yesterday or last week, we won't remember it and we'll just do it again. And again, and again, it, until a message it, like this a comes common through. common description of something taking over the system that we're calling yeah. up. I mean, you, it's sticking out like 80 sore thumbs. All you need is a simple understanding, and it makes complete sense. Yeah. Why right. does it say any life run on self-will will hardly be a success? Mm. Because they witnessed a lot of lives run on self-will. <laughs> And that self-will presented it as your will. So you were thinking you were making up the orders that you were following. You were given orders and you believe you made up the orders, which made it so fucking confusion where you hit incredible cognitive dissonance, which is I hate myself. Mm -hmm. Or I might my, my own worst enemy. That's that's like taking the orders that seem to destroy your life as you're the ones you gave yourself. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. can break this bondage. You can break it simply by starting to recognize it is not you. Jesus Christ. How hard is it? What are you going to reclaim when you see what you're not? You're going to reclaim what you are. Hmm. That's what gets reclaimed. That's what gives you the, the oomph behind seeing what you're not, is you're now seeing from what you are. And so you can easily recognize what you're not. When you're confused about what you are, you're easily taken over. And we have been. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. But now you're rooted in some kind of condition. We call it a spiritual condition. It's just not a mental condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're rooted in something. And now we can see we're not in that 
beginning of those sentences about all the calamity, which starts with without knowing it. We are not in that anymore. We, we know it. We know that self has defeated us and we're recognizing it, which is preventing the defeat of self. Yeah. Yes. We have gained knowledge, not self-knowledge, but knowledge of self. And that knowledge as a compilation is that it's not me. Wow. So now you can listen to another radio station while this old radio station keeps playing. Yeah, because it will keep playing, but you're not listening to it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's obviously for many of us, it lost its GPS position years ago. Mm -hmm. It's really not directing our lives. It isn't. When it says left, I very rarely go left. When it says stop, I don't. When it says rush, I don't. So basically, 90% of its old control has been reclaimed yeah and now we're be, being directed by what we call the highest spirit you know the higher power yes mm -hmm. we are and look at our lives they're intrinsically connected what we're listening to and how things look completely connected to the to it yeah so oh, yeah we, we have learned to stop listening through grace and shit to stop listening to that which has defeated us and now we're listening to that which puts us to maximum use for ourselves and others. Fucking hallelujah. Yeah. yeah now yeah. you're in the habit of being sober, just like you were in the habit of fucking taking yourself to be self. Now you're in the habit of not taking yourself to be self and you're sober. Yeah. That's established. You're past the point of sincerely as you're established in it. It's a habit. No thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, we got a uh, Terry has his hand up, a couple of sore thumbs in the audience, or maybe, maybe uh, open hands. We got a couple hands up. All right. Yeah. We got Terry. Come on in, Terry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, it's interesting that Jacob should pick this reading um, because uh, the part of the reading dealt with the uh, does the problem center in the mind? And the interesting thing about it is that a couple of years ago on one of my anniversaries, my wife gave me the copy of the original uh, manuscript, which was the manuscript they took to the printer. And when I got to that page on page 24, uh, where it says regarding the, the problems in the mind, there was a note that someone had written at the bottom of the page. It says, this is a contradiction of of uh, the doctor's opinion, which I thought was really interesting. However, you know, and for years I looked at it as the physical side of the illness, which is which is true. There is a, a physical side of the illness. The allergy. Yeah. yeah, the allergy, yes, the allergy portion. But now over the last couple of years, I've looked as you have the idea that self, which is foreign to me, to begin with, as is 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 my main problem, and continues from time to time to be my main problem. When self pops up, I have tried to to understand that it is foreign to my nature, that it is something different than 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 my view of it was in the beginning. So I, I just found that interesting because somewhere in 1939, when they were discussing the book. In the final stages, someone caught that, the idea that there was a contradiction between what uh, Silkworth said and what uh, what they were saying on page 24 or 25. Yeah. Anyway, that's my thoughts for today. Thanks for letting me. Uh, and, and I, too, uh, Paul, found out that as I go to meetings, no one discusses self. Even when they're talking about the... Uh, the columns and everything, they're not talking about the problem. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I've done over the last couple of years is, is to re when I talk about my experiences, how I've discovered the difference, mm. the line that, that where I was at the beginning and where I am now. 
So thank you again for your uh, your your weekly uh, satsangs. Thank you very very much. Yes, right. thank you. Well, you know, the head would love you to believe it's an allergy of the body and not alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would. It would be. Just don't drink or use it. I, wood. It's sort of like, you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the head's a tricky thing. But yes, that's cool. A lot of this is contradictory. It doesn't mean, uh, from at some point, both aren't true. Yeah. It feels like you're manufacturing your own misery. I don't believe you are, but it feels like it to the point where people will say, yes, we manufacture our own misery. And a lot of people will nod and agree, but underlying that is the act of being identified as self. So when self manufactures misery, we think we manufacture the misery. This is, this is how the past binds us so much, yeah? And especially by the actions that we were driven to do, uh, are holding many people ransom in their heads to this day, yeah? And uh, I think that's a robbery that can be easily corrected, literally, I do. First, bring the light to it a little bit and then see where that goes. But there's a lot of robbery still self robs a lot you know it holds us as the doer of shit we had nothing to do with and i really would like to see this understanding get more like standardized so it would be not like an exotic ad adversarial idea but part and parcel of some that power is going to constantly reveal to us stuff yes i think that's what we're we're, as a community member, we're trying to insert it into the community in a way so that it becomes readily available because I never heard it myself. And I was led the same way. I'm going to look at my resentments, my fear and my harms to others, which is great. It's a good way to start the action sets. But I would think down the road, it would be nice to have a clarification of that, that what you find when you look at your role and thing you find self's role in things. And it's much, much, much larger than you ever imagined. It can be all encompassing actually, yeah. So not that you made a decision based on self, but all decisions are based on self. What? Yeah. So, yeah, so here we are. And I know repetition is helpful. And the people who set up these Zooms and have kept it going, we've, it's, it's allowed us to repeat this thing over and over again with the hopes of it sinking in. And then people who come here go other places and hopefully it will sink in and become, you know, like, you know, not like an exotic, you know, has no trail in the forest, but a, a trail set and people have walked down it and other people could follow. Yeah. Yeah, so, and the team here that sets this up is part and parcel of this whole event. I have the easiest role because I'm not doing shit and I'm not talking actually. It's, it's even easier than talk. I'm the only, I just have to talk. I don't even do the talking. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that I dwell on all day. It's something that comes through. Yeah, and uh, I haven't met anything to counter this recognition for them and uh i'd like it to become a more available idea in our communities literally yeah yeah and of course when you enter introduce a new idea you're gonna probably catch some flack you know <clears throat> you know what i mean you just are just the way it goes like for me in my community i was i was given nicknames that sort of neutered me fourth step paul Buddha Paul, non-self Paul, radical cleric Paul, all this stuff. And so people neutered me by naming me. Yeah. So they they emphasized the messenger and they just didn't have to listen to the message. Yeah. And which I that's one of the reasons why motivate us to put a website up and try to get the shit out. 
because as they say in Christianity, uh, the prophets never recognized in its own village. Yeah, it's a difficult thing. Because of course, we look at people as the arbiter, not as the conduit, yeah? Where to me, I would hope if you've been touched by ALA, you've seen life more as a conduit than the source, you know, the S-O-U-R-C-E, I feel. That's what grew in me, that something will use you yeah, to get something out. Yeah, so so the emphasis, of course, when we're in self, the emphasis is, is on things. So everyone, uh, you know, shoots the messenger so it does, they don't have to read the message, you know. Eh, whatever. <laughs> it's just, just the way things roll here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Anyone else? I think we have another one, James in Vancouver. That's right. Come on hey. in, James. Yeah, you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, so um, I've recently been um, going through the steps again, and my sponsor has me doing like these, you know, one of these like ready guides online where I'm like answering like, you know, like 200 questions a step or whatever. And, um, you know, like I've, I've like, I've done, you know, sets of steps before. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm feeling fairly like convinced of what you're talking about, which is like the ways in which self is defeated me and that it's, it's, it's foreign. Like this is this kind of thing. It's like foreign to me. Um, and it, I don't know, it like, it's starting to feel a bit like redundant in that, like my, my fourth step that I did, like, a few months ago it's not nothing else is going to be really be revealed except for the fact that self has defeated me you know in a billion ways and i'm kind of i've been listening to the joint charlies and listening to you and you know i'm really thinking that um you know i'm that maybe a lot of this stuff that i'm being told to do is is redundant but you know of course like i'm i'm kind of in a place where you know, I don't trust my own thinking, right? So I don't want to yeah. be like doing this for ulterior motives. Like I don't want to write it out or whatever. Um, you know, so I was kind of curious about, you know, because one one argument could say, well, you know, I didn't stay clean like the previous time or I didn't stay sober. Um, but at the same time, I feel like from this point, you know, I'm writing a bunch of, of, uh, of steps and like on, you know, trying to cut through denial. And I feel like I really realize the powerlessness you know just before that drink which i didn't really before i was just kind of in the powerlessness when you're when you're in it um and you know i have a higher power in my life and i see all these ways that that self has defeated me um and i'm kind of thinking like maybe maybe i'm not going about it the right way by following kind of what my my sponsor is, is telling me to do um and um, i had a little bit of a second uh part here was that we're talking about how in meetings and things like that the, the message of the of the self and it isn't always being um you know clearly defined and, um doesn't that sometimes for me it can create a bit of like I feel a bit of a distance with, with me and other people in the fellowship and I wonder how one might kind of overcome that or or deal with that because the fellowship's a, a hugely important thing and I can't do this by myself. So how do I sort of reconcile those two, those differences? Yes. Well those those two are great. Uh the second way you're going to learn how to face that stuff successfully. Yeah. By sometimes making mistakes. Sometimes you may be too fervent and you want to, it seems like you're proselytized, you know, you're, uh, yeah. And so you see that. And then basically you start rolling into a sense that what you are is going to say is going to speak louder than what you say. So you're just going into the, that sense of a loving presence that's infusing itself, it's expressing itself in the group conscience, you know, at the meetings. So a lot of times you don't say shit. You're just sitting there being mm. available and present. So that way you just learn, you know, that's why we have this. I'm not breaking into AA Zoom meetings and trying to take over the microphone. You know what I mean? We just, we set up a place if you're interested in coming, come. If you're not, don't come. It's not like we're sending out pamphlets to draft people. We're just putting out, yeah? So that thing. The first thing is, 
there's if there's a feeling there and I felt like there was a feeling before you said it seems like it's redundant. It felt like there was a feeling that it's redundant. You're going to start having to follow that and see if it's successful or not, because right. this is how you start living after a while. You start because when we come in, we don't trust feelings. We don't trust because the head had been manipulating the feelings to lead to a drink and everything like that. But the feelings is a form of communication with the, sp the spirit. Yes. The spirit of the higher power will communicate to you, to us through a feeling. You'll get a feeling about something. And it's, like an yeah. it. hmm? it's like an intuition. Yeah. Like an intuition. And, and of course we're wary to put our money on that bet. But you'll see what happens if you do. And I bet you it's going to prove to be successful. And now you'll reestablish a relationship to that intuition. Mm. Like access where it's been broken or fucking not work, not trust, not trusted for years. You re you you open communication with that. Yeah. And it, it's giving you some communication and then. I would talk to your sponsor about it and say, listen, I don't feel I need any more to see what has defeated me. Let's get to let's how about I, you know, I. I uh, volunteered at the soup kitchen or something. I'd rather do some service than I would want to go over this again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just see. And then if it doesn't work, you can find someone else. The, it's sure. not about sponsor, sponsee. It's about sponsoring. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. It's the verb and the nouns aren't that important. The verb is the important thing. So you need a certain sponsoring that may, he may not want to, or he's not giving you. And so find someone else. Yeah. That doesn't, to sponsor, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's not about, oh, I've lost the sponsee. No, that sponsee may be listening to the sponsoring from someone else that he wasn't listening to the sponsoring from me. The mm. point is to get some suggestions and follow them and see if they work or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 So that's what I would uh, suggest. I've had it, you know, I had people I worked with and I'd have to tell them to stop doing inventory. Mm. Yeah, because I had a hunch, a strong hunch, that it had turned into obsession with self. Yeah, that they were going over every motive or intention, and you're just not that fucking important. Yeah, for that much scrutiny. <laughs> to me, I I think the fourth step in the big book is sufficient. Mm -hmm. I know the 12 steps has a lot more questions, and if you want to get in there with a microscope, great. <laughs> but I felt... Uh, that microscope can start becoming, it can start also mutating what you're seeing and doing weird shit. And uh, it's easily captured by obsession with self. So, yeah. you know, there's, I would run into people like that and then I would sit or someone that wants to do that. You know, there are a lot of people that will play the drill sergeant role for people. And it's a, an important part for many people men especially they have the men's group and there's tons of testosterone and they're doing 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 hey whatever works now i don't want to stay in a boot camp for the rest of my life in recovery i want to be like a free range alcoholic i don't want to have to <laughs> walk the coop of every day but it works for people for periods of time yeah and but you need to know when it stops working and sometimes you're going to have to step up on the you know, the diving board of uh, intuition and see and take the plunge. And this is how we learn how to face life successfully. What recovery is doing is, you know, restoring the accesses to these things called intuition and fucking other things that have been just completely shut down. And you've just been listening to the narrative of your head. Yeah, we've been we've been taking one. We've had one access uh like bubble that we've been listening to yeah and this is what gets restored you know the intuition the sense of hey you know 
this deal seems to have hooks in it, you know, like they're saying there's no hooks, but I can feel there's going to be hooks. Like if I take this help, I'm going to have to do something and I don't want to do that. Yeah. So this started happening a lot. And I went back to re to trusting my feelings. Yeah. By learning, I could face life successfully. So a lot of shit that had been seemingly lost got restored. Yeah. And, uh, my gut's got a pretty good take on things. It does. It does. And I, uh, and if I mistake something, it was done honestly, and I'll try to make an amends for it. But, you know, if I think something smells, it may smell. Yeah. 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 I guess that, that learning, that being that conduit of that higher power and tapping into that is that process of also like learning to trust yourself because you're not just well, following your own head. Because you're not trusting yourself. You're getting out of the trust of self. You're getting, you're trusting what, yeah. And we're, and you're basically, there's a, a renewing of broken ends, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember when I came in, I didn't trust myself as far as I could throw me. So I seem to have, I left drinking, but I was under a probation by the policeman in the head for four <laughs> years. And it got like, I couldn't shit that stick up my ass out. It was still up there. It was really, I didn't. And I had to go through that to, to, to recognize I'm not that. Yeah. But I mean, everything had to go be gone over. If I do this, if I do that, and it became an obsession of self. And uh, after a few years, I got left off of that probation and I started to enjoy the ability to enjoy life. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought you put it down perfectly. I had a, I felt a feeling in there and I think you got that feeling is right. That would be my opinion. And uh, yeah, to me, the point of the inventory is to see what has defeated us. To me, that's the main theme. If you see that the main thing of the inventory has been accomplished. Yeah. The purpose has been served. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't, you know, I don't want, it didn't turn into therapy. AA for, I didn't start going over every fucking thing. I was, you know, I'm a stumbling, bumbling bumper car action figure. I run into things. Yeah. And this happens, but I just, I, I lost interest in like uh, adding any more flaws on my little two floor fucking project. Yes. I don't want to have a skyscraper of Paul. It's just, uh, yeah. So, but that may be, so that, that, that influences how I see things. I'm not, when someone says you have 200 more questions to ask, I'm, I'm really, uh, <laughs> not, I'm not, it's not interested in, uh, I'm not interested in it that much. I don't want to know myself completely. <laughs> I just want to know it's not me. I don't. I don't want to know the intricacies of self trying to be in a relationship or anything. I don't. I just want to know it's not me. That was the, <laughs> that's the primary point that was very valuable. Now, you know, oh, Paul, self, as yeah, well, there you go. But I'm not interested in uh, making the self the greatest self the self could be. I know I'm not. You know, I'd much rather just be readily available and at present at this very moment. <laughs> you know, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> My, I'm not. I don't have a agenda to make myself better today. I really don't. I'm not. Basically, you know, that's. I just. Uh, I think a tool if useful, has reached its greatest purpose, yeah? Not that it has the sharpest edge or the shiniest surface, but just that it's it's being used and uh, it's being put to good use. That's enough for me. Yeah. 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 So that's how I see it with that. Yeah. Thanks for all that. Uh... <laughs> That helps clarify things for me.
Oh, great, great. And you I know, but, that intuition and, more, yeah. Said, yeah, but if it's not working for you, just listen to someone else. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> That's truly really it. I just want to, recognizing self as foreign to me was what I was really truly looking for. I didn't know that. But after it availed itself with me, I knew it because I lost interest in a lot of the furthering of self. Um, yeah. 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 So. Thanks, James. Yes. Uh, we have Aaron and Tobias up next. All right. Well, I come on, Aaron and Tobias. Yeah. You know where it is. You thank you yeah i just wanted to say thank you so much paul for um you know continuing this message sharing this message i heard it early in sobriety and it really helped me with the steps and i i also had this feeling like if i go into all the details that was already a pattern of self that i had recognized needing to go into all the details and um, find salvation for what I'm not. And uh, hearing this message early in sobriety really helped me with that process to continue to work with a sponsor and continue to go through the steps, but not identified as self. And it, it just made all the difference for me. And I'm just uh, really glad to keep coming back because it feels so good to, sh to share this understanding with others. And then it seems to be living through me more and more. And when people early in recovery call me on the phone, I'm not speaking, you know, just like you said, it's it's just coming through me and they kind of know what to expect in a way. And it's really nice because I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I'm, I'm convinced that I'm not self. Yeah. And to just know the exact nature of the wrong, the wrongs are less important than identifying that the nature of it. And yes, it's e it's easier to see when I'm identifying as it, and it's easier to just drop that identification or not have to do anything but just see it, and it emphasizes what I am prior to that. So just thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your service and uh, everyone who helps make this meeting possible. Yeah, that was great. I mean, yes, see, it's all you you know how you're defeated has some value but what defeated you is really where the relief lies yeah you become you can become a master of how you've been defeated yeah <laughs> and so you'll go over there'll be more and more wrongs to look at yeah but see the wrongs have a point because the wrongs if you look at it with a certain understanding show a reflection of self so you see the real uh, source of the problem by the reflection on the wrongs yes mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah it's sort of uh it's like someone taking a picture and you see the person that took the picture that some reflective thing to me that's the value is to see mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah that's good thank you very nice yeah. thank you thank you it's nice to see you tobias yeah. i like the hats there hey Let's uh, let's say goodbye. Eh? It's always a short farewell. Hopefully, we'll be here. Uh, what's today? Thursday. Oh, Saturday. So we have a live meeting here at the house Saturday, one o'clock, a Western time. If you're ever around here, come and join us, and uh, and we'll have the Zoom. So let me thank everyone. Say goodbye, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Nice to see you. James Lebowski, always. James and I have been uh, going down the aisles of the supermarket with only 60 cents. Yeah. <laughs> Both of our checks have bounced, and uh, but we're still in the supermarket. All right, Mr. Lebowski. Got our creamer. That's all that matters. That's right, bro. We can, we can we can swim in our own sorrows yes all right all right we have kerry on the love yes very nice see you bro
We've got uh, Barbara E. We've got Axel. We've got Mickey, as always. Aaron and Tobias, fantastic. Terry, fantastic. Camarillo, Kathleen, Laurie. We got Joseph. He's back inside. He's in France. Nice to see you, Joseph. Terry Bowling in North Carolina. Oh, Chris, uh, Chris T's dropped in. That's nice to see you. Nice to see you, bro. Roman Mueller. Kurt Zimmerman. Nice to see Kurt. We got James in Vancouver. Yeah. No matter what, James, just don't drink today. That's the first thing. Or use. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Sean, as always, don't take your eyes off the road. Teresa. Nice to see you, Oliver, Oliver in uh, Berlin. Nice to see you, Oliver. He looks like he's outside today. We got Jules on vocals, one of my favorite names. Lucia, we got Miss Volkman, we got David Bitterman, we got Mike M at the house here. Uh, now, when I say goodbye, I'm not saying goodbye to Mike M yet, so uh, he's, he's lingering. Yeah, and uh, we've got everyone. Hey, thank you. We'll see you soon, Saturday, whatever. And thanks so much for holding the space, you know, the loving presence of this loving whatever expressing thanks, throughout Paul. group. Yes. Thank see you. Thank you, Paul.